Welcome back to another episode of Vash Reacts. We got the homie. Well, I'll watch one of his videos um, with the Nicktoons Espada. And he was um, ranking where would they be placed at on a, actually being part of the Espada. You know, we went from Spongebob, Timmy, Aang, Tommy, you know, Mikey, the Turtles, Danny, Jenny, Jimmy, and Zoro. He counted Zoro. No problem. Okay. First, I'm going to subscribe. Definitely subscribing. My bad. Got to check my phone real fast. Okay, good. So, let's say, how strong is the Cartoon Network Koski? Now, I did a video like this on my TikTok. And I was describing the pictures. It's more pictures. It's a lot more pictures. He probably put them in the video. Now, I was waiting for somebody to do a detailed version of this. Because I want to do one as well. Um, but you know, my ADHD, I'm going to be sidetracked like a motherfucker, but I'm glad he did. So I can, I'm going to try to elaborate on what he said from the homie, no operator. All right, we want to dive right in. So artist Darren Z drew Shout out to Darren Z. Yeah, look at him. Look at him. When, when, when was this pick? I never saw that pick. Toughest anime villain yeah, cosplay. Yeah, so I want to. artist Darren Look at this. That's the Nick Jr. one. Look, that's the Disney one. Aaron Z drew what might be some of the toughest anime villain cosplays of our favorite childhood cartoons look at that the PBS could have one. ever been imagined. And look at the Boomerang one. In this video, one. I asked you the question. Which late 90s, early 2000s cartoon villain organization would be more powerful and win in a fight? The Cartoon Network Akatsuki or the Nickelodeon Espada? Last video, we went in depth about the Nicktoons Espada and their yeah. individual ranks within the group. So if you haven't watched that go check it out because there's going to be a lot of added context as well as zany terms like Toon Force that I'm not going to be spending time explaining in this video that I did in the last one. But if you don't care about any of that, sick. Let's dive right in. In this okay. video, we're Come going on. to briefly describe the different abilities and powers of the Cartoon Network Akatsuki, summarizing what each of these different characters' roles would be in the organization, and at the very end of okay, the video... Okay, that's a major spoiler. I have not watched Steven Universe. Well, I have... Um, I just didn't watch Steven Universe Future. Um, never got the chance to, but I'm we'll a, be able to decide which nostalgic cartoon anime villain organization is better. I, I love now, Ben The 10. difference between the Akatsuki and Espada is as far as anime crime organizations go, the Akatsuki don't rank the members in terms of strength like the Espada do. They're <laughs> right. paired into duos to watch <laughs> each other's backs as they target monsters called tailed beasts, creatures that have been known to terrorize entire countries. Mm -hmm. Therefore, all of the Akatsuki need to meet a certain quota level of power in order to rival the strongest ninjas in the world right. so instead of a ranking type video i'll be comparing the cartoon stand-ins to the original akatsuki teams and okay. to see how these new matchups fit as a two-man squad most importantly if they're strong enough to accomplish their job of capturing a tailed beast so that way the cartoon network akatsuki can awaken the ten tails i forgive me i mean jake the dog <laughs> let's start with the very first akatsuki team that we run into during the main series of naruto itachi it's uchiha and, and Kisame Kisame. Hoshigaki replaced here by Finn the human and the gumball Darwin what so who will be who will be who so we calling Finn Itachi and Kisame gonna be gumball and Darwin and combo respectively now the first thing you'll notice i mean about we put Gumball them together as a group. is they yeah, are about the happening. most inconceivable instance of tune force i think i might have ever seen gumball and darwin are able to manipulate space create pocket dimensions teleport well past the speed of light and recover their bodies from literally just being minced into liquid the usual but where it gets fucking insane is when gumball breaks the viewer's tv screen and reverses time back to the very beginning of the universe as if it was just another tuesday for him there is even an entire arc in the show where another character takes gumball's protagonist role and it's just heavily implied that the balance of his entire fucking universe is held in the palm of the show's main protagonist it's subconscious you know he, he can't do it purposely he can he just doesn't realize it doesn't change the fact that if gumball just gives up one day or something the entire physical realm 
as we know it just crumbles and falls apart entirely. He's like fucking Azatoth, the blind idiot god from the Cthulhu mythos. The being that is asleep and is dreaming just the entire universe and then one day he's just gonna wake up and everything just goes yeah, I'm that's light. fucking gumball. Okay, also, that was scary. Because as soon as he snapped, my fucking ring light fell. Oh my fucking god, that was fucking scary. I'm clipping that. And that wasn't even supposed to be a clip. It just straight fell as soon as he fucking snapped. Okay, that was fucking scary. It's like his snap sent the fucking echo through my... Hold on. Like, yeah, on this channel, we don't clip shit for, like... Nothing get cuts out. That was scary. I gotta fix this shit. Yeah. As soon as he snapped, like, my ring light just, just fucking fell. Oh, my God. That was fucking scary. Like, it literally just fell. Power to judge you based oh, on shit. political correctness and conjure a sword made out of pure self-righteousness to kill you with. This is a children's show, by the way. Now, Finn, the human from Adventure Time, much more grounded character, kind of. Yeah, sure. Finn does wield a sword fueled by the essence of Hunson Abadir, Lord of Evil, an eldritch being comparable to other cosmic entities such as the Lich, Adventure Time's concept of death, a cosmic being capable of destroying all life in the universe. But the difference is, by the end of his series, Finn has done everything he can to earn that planet-destroying power. Finn has had multiple adventures where he survived certain death from intense heat, sheer cold ice, having his soul stolen or his body transmutated into another being entirely, but every time, Finn comes back unscathed, matching the power of his shapeshifter dog, Jake, who has even shown the power to just obliterate mountains. Finn's also just a master at a bunch of different martial arts styles, or he's even a ninja, he's a wizard, uh, he's been trained by sword masters, it all just feels like a much more honest character to have in an anime fight and then there's just gumball and darwin who have literally just glared hard enough at living beings to inflict death upon them now they do have episodes where they show themselves as extremely capable like when they work their way up to being ceos of a major company and became rich in only a year or perform successful organ transplants despite all of the organs being invisible so as honest as you would want to make them in a fight especially considering Gumball and Darwin are always going to try and run away before actually fighting, because if they can take the easy way out, they will. This is still the same character who conjured a fucking Death Note that just rewrites reality. So, needless to say, this Sakatsuki duo would cripple their assigned tailed beasts. Yeah. Finn would probably yeah. end up doing all the work, sure. But if Gumball and Darwin ever got into danger, it's instant death for anything involved. Canonically, the next team we see would be Sasori. Yeah, I can see that happening. I can see that being like a perfect combination. Finn and Jake is actually, you know, on a shit, but I think this is just Finn without Jake. So, Finn will be actually on his toes trying to get stuff done. Gumball and Darwin will be to the point of let's fool around so much that we get shit done on purpose. Gumball and Darwin, that whole show is just the embodiment of Toon Force. Um, <coughs> so, <coughs> I can see Finn and Gumball and Darwin being a perfect pair to pair up with each other and Daedara. Zetsu does technically appear at the end of the first series, but Zoro's taking his place apparently. Of course. So that makes our next tag team Steven Universe and Ben 10. What? Every single person that knows Ben Tennyson's scaling just collectively gasped and said it's over for Nickelodeon. But hold on, let's explain to all of the people who have understood and known the feeling of love before why Ben 10 is busted. Ben 10 is most famously known for being a kid that was unwittingly bestowed the Omnitrix. A gauntlet yes, because slash... Timmy is his matchup. It's either Timmy or I want to say, I don't want to say Danny. I say Timmy and um, pretty much SpongeBob will be his his matchups. 
you know, wristwatch Kimmy will actually get from a fight. Let's Ben transform into numerous different alien species, and later on, even add unknown species into his roster of transformations. Yeah, Ghost ben Freak Mummy. was always I remember my that Halloween favorite, episode. but we don't talk about him anymore. Using yeah, yeah, uh, these various Ghost alien with life forms, and sometimes with the help of other extraterrestrials or even his family members, remember, Ben yeah, is he able clapped, to conquer galactic warlords like Vilgax, who have reigned over a galaxy for like two centuries, as well as other impressive feats depending on the version of the show you're watching. I mean, he weld the sword of Ascalon, a mm -hmm. blade that possesses the power to defeat destroyers of galaxies. And it's crazy to think that in this point of the series of videos, a character like Ben fucking 10 being able to destroy entire galaxies shouldn't even be a surprise anymore. Well. But why is Ben 10 so renowned in the power scaling community? It's because of one particular alien Alien X. Alien X. To give you the short description, Alien X is just literally the embodiment and concept of reason and logic as a whole. And by that, I mean Alien X controls the existence of the entire universe and every other universe at its fingertips. Able to recreate the universe from scratch purely off of the mere thought of the action alone, Alien X is also capable of changing the genetic makeup of all species or ethnically cleansing planets by warping the populations billions of light years away from that current location. The actual shape and visage of Alien X isn't even really present, it's merely just an avatar of the colossal essence of the entity that actually lives in a whole separate plane of existence that is known as, and I fucking quote you, the debate dimension. So you can't even kill Alien X if you wanted to, let alone even if you somehow were able to enter the debate dimension, Alien X actually isn't even just Ben, but the combination of three minds. Ben is only one of the pillars that make up Alien X, so they have to duke it out with a giant giant monster that can either think you out of existence entirely or just casually step through a planet on accident and kill you trying to stomp on you. Now obviously, Ben isn't always just going to whip out Alien X like he's Megami calling Maharaja <laughs> out in Jujutsu Kaisen, but it's important to remember minor what the fuck yeah. this man is capable of if push comes to shove. A tailed beast isn't going to do much against the concept of reason as a whole. And then there's Steven Universe, yep. who although being a pretty powerful contender to have in the Cartoon Network Akatsuki overall is kind of overshadowed by his teammate Ben. I mean, once you discuss a character that literally just embodies the idea of logic itself, it's hard to seem cool in comparison. That being said, in the grand scheme of things, Steven Universe would probably be able to fight a tailed beast all on his own if we're considering his power level Steven, by the end of so the series. Steven Universe is a hybrid oh, entity, that's half him human now? and half of a race of beings known See, as See, I Jet. didn't watch Steven universe future oh i gotta go back and watch into his that role of being a protector of humanity steven has come to fully understand and control his gem powers and use them in ways that make him a significant threat in battle by using steven's signature weapon his shield he can reflect all the attacks for defense and launch the shield as a projectile right. for offense yeah These that, shields I know, cause I know that no stamina at all for steven to repeatedly conjure and he can even summon them for other people as a gem steven can also summon small or large pink bubbles that are also capable of shape-shifting at his whim, making giant barriers for allies or converting the bubbles into weapons with spikes or boxing gloves. Steven is exceptional off the battlefield as well, where he would probably be the best asset for the he has a neck. as Steven can astral he has project a himself neck. to stealthily surveil those who can't see the intangible. With his pink gem powers, Steven's saliva also carry properties of life, healing others from significant injuries or even from death if Steven's emotions are strong enough enough, and Steven's saliva can also create life through nature and vegetation that can also become strong allies that can rival his fellow gems or be given complex commands. Now, when it comes to That's fighting OP. a tailed beast That's that have OP. terrorized multiple countries and can rearrange mountainscapes with their biju bombs, the closest Steven Universe has ever appeared to this kind of strength is either when he's in his pink state or fully become the representation of his emotional distress, the giant kaiju 
monster. As it's in these rage forms, although Steven is no longer in control and his unstable emotions and trauma get the better of him, his physical stats and potential are amplified significantly. To the point Steven is moving so quickly, all time seems to freeze around him and after images are burned behind him. The pink state also leads to Steven releasing terrorizing screams that shatter the floor of entire warships. Oh, I gotta go back even stronger Steven bubbles either. that could threaten an entire city. Or when Steven becomes the monster kaiju, his awakening shakes the entire planet. Obviously, with Steven becoming inconsolable in the pink state or a kaiju state, these instances aren't ideal. So yeah, because I, I remember his Steven emotion has been to rely on. For yeah, help, so his he emotion have to go get the best of him. Our replacements for Hedon and Kakazu are the Mordecai Rigby team up matched with. Okay, um, great team up by the way. I I, I agree. I feel like Steven and Ben will be a great play on each other, and they can really rely on each other. Ben will have Steven emotions in check. Steven will be the reason, you know, some type of logic behind Ben. I gotta go back and watch Steven Universe. I, I didn't even... Damn. But to replace Hedon and Kakuzu... Now, don't get me wrong. I don't remember Over the Garden Wall at all. I don't remember it. But just Mordecai and Rigby give them a task and yeah work from over the garden wall all i have to say is thank god that mordecai and rigby only count as one member because yeesh we thought ben was carrying the slack in that previous duo and that's even being mean to steven universe but now we've got work who at best the only feat i can prescribe is having the courage to stand up to a paranormal entity known as the beast maybe reject its manipulation tactics but like that's literally it uh watch over the garden wall i don't know what else you want me to say here focusing on the yeah, real heroes i'm had this i don't remember quote duo mordecai I remember and coming out are surprisingly like pretty me. fucking capable if they're placed in an anime world can they take on a whole ass tailed beast yes i don't know let's check the stats first of all tell them to cut a fucking wall tell them to cut grass and do it by the end of the day or you're fired problem taken care of the two of them are Death Quan Do masters, which bestow the user with the power of literally just fucking hakaiing people in a single punch or kick. And when Mordecai and Rigby fight with their respective Death Quan Do styles, they're creating pillars of energy that are just rippling through the town and almost wiping it off the map. They've also been blessed by the gods of basketball, giving them damn near the speed of light as they're able to fly to Jupiter and back in like moments. Now, as much of a joke the series of regular show is you can't deny that when given the fists of fucking justice they were able to combat universe ending threats and yeah. even in situations of the timeline warping or reality altering mordecai and rigby both know what's going on and remember how things used to be nullifying outright reality warping powers also not for nothing the two of them are drawn with the power a musical instrument that allows the two of them to take, take control to of literally take, anyone they want or make any Anything they say happen, even like being teleported to the moon or making Benson give them a raise. And if none of that works, they can just start a rap, a rap battle with the enemy and defeat them by making the loser dead ass just spontaneously combust. So while someone like Steven Universe is pretty damn strong, they might just need a little bit of backup against a tailed beast. Mordecai and Rigby are literally picking up all the slack for their partner work. And yeah. unfortunately, they aren't the only ones in the Sakatsuki. Because since the all-out battle between cartoon verses requires us to have Zoro fight Zoro and be cancelled out, he can't make up for any of the slack on this criminal organization, just like the real Zetsu, funnily enough. So at least he plays the role well. But even our Toby stand-in, the guy who's supposed to be the big secret bad of everything is reduced to being three bears all trying to fit in a cloak and act like one single person the three brothers in we bear bears would literally I love that just show. get the same I, useless treatment that i, I gave bear to bear. work from over the garden wall well, if well pretty much ice bear will be picking up all the slack for them 
not for them being apex fucking predators, I don't think I would have much to say. Like, at the very least, they could maul Wirt from over the garden wall, so that puts them above that level. But that doesn't really say much, does it? The three bears do get into some crazy hijinks in their cartoon, like mm -hmm. the polar bear being super smart yeah, and making mechanical upgrades to a Roomba to turn it into a death machine that can shoot electricity or attack people with axes. Or when the panda's braces just give him magnetic attraction to literally becoming full-on telepathy, allowing him to fly or create large meteorites out of collected smartphones that could threaten entire city blocks. But, like, again, they're just bears at the most they fought like robots and stuff in their show one tailed beast bomb their whole show is off the map and not only <laughs> is the cartoon network akatsuki lacking a proper toby replacement the leadership duo of pain and conan also suffers heavy losses conan is replaced by now i know that's infinity train i have not seen infinity train i stopped watching cartoon network after that i think before it came on but i need to go back people said it's good like it was good to the point it got can't so I gotta go back and watch that. Tulip Olsen. Who? From fucking Infinity Train. What can she do? Um, code really well? Fight mechs and stuff? How, how did some of these people pass the Akatsuki entrance exam? <laughs> Are we, as a Cartoon Network Akatsuki, that desperate as a criminal organization? We don't even have a set standard of qualifications for joining. That's we true. We have the whole Teen Titans to pick from. I yeah. feel like the Powerpuff Girls are a good choice. Yep. Give me Courage the Cowardly Dog, yep. Samurai Jack, the Grim yep. Reaper from Billy and Mandy, yep. and I will personally bring your criminal organization back to the fucking top i'm talking nba finals darren have your manager call me hit me up so last but not least we have uncle grandpa stepping in as our pain replacement i guess that's fair that yeah that's every person yeah. in the world's uncle and their grandpa would lead this organization but also the fact that he's kind of like gumball as in he's an entity that exists as the actual pillar of his universe uncle grandpa as a concept has infected the different planes of existence so much he has come to possess the gods and devils and fully consume and become their form. Uncle Grandpa exists as multiple things at once, but also not at all. Sometimes the children he helps don't remember he's their Uncle Grandpa until after he's been around them long enough and influenced them. This ability to also clone himself and take the place of other big entities in the world is shown to take place separate from Uncle Grandpa's own will as an own autonomous feature even limbs or pieces of himself that become separated will just take on lives of their own and eventually grow into their own version of uncle grandpa it's unknown if uncle grandpa is like aware of all of this power he possesses or if he's so diabolical his innocent personality is all a facade as the man does catastrophic actions such as create entire pocket dimensions just by painting on t-shirts or making faces that cause others to erupt in an endless laughter that only ends with the victim dying from explosion without any second thought. <laughs> Uncle Grandpa has even just caused tears in the space-time continuum quote unquote on accident. It's quite possible Uncle Grandpa is the perfect evil leader for an anime criminal organization due to his supreme need to dominate everything around him and force his way into people's lives as an important person. At any point in time Uncle Grandpa can just take the world and shake it up for his amusement. I mean, he literally like has a button that just turns the entire world upside down. I'm not doing shtick. Like, why would you even have a button like that if you weren't a dick? Just like all his other <laughs> Toon Force members, Uncle Grandpa is impossible to kill, basically. Being vaporized, decapitated, dude just acts like nothing happened at all. But again, Uncle Grandpa not only controls everything, I remind you, he is everything. If you continually pull back the facade from the Uncle Grandpa show, even the editor that works on the show is Uncle Grandpa. And if I peel back one more layer, you're Uncle Grandpa too. Good morning. So what do you think? What side, Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon, which side has the stronger criminal organization? Let me know in the comments what you think. And also hit me with a like and subscribe if you want to see more dumb fun content like this. Thank you so much for watching all the way. Well, honestly, yeah. Uncle Grandpa will be a better fit for pain. I have not seen Infinity Train, so I can't vouch if she will fit Conan um, right now. Y'all might, I, I give it to the Nickelodeon, Xbox. 
I, f- I feel like it's more skilled heavy hitters than just heavy hitters on that side. Um, everybody is like skilled, prepared, ready to fight. Sponge, Aang, Timmy, Jimmy, XJ9, Danny, instead of, you know, the Wee Bear Bears, Gumball, Darwin. I, it's more Toon Force in the Cosmic Necro side than Nickelodeon side. But, um,. I think he needs time to do the rest of the pictures. But, yeah. This was homie. Homie, no operator. Shout out to you for going deep into these pictures. I'm going to clip this. This chick will be on my TikTok. Yo, I'll... I'll it's time. You, you got you, you to gotta do the rest of the pictures. You got to do the rest of them. But it's been Vast Reacts. Like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.